So I think we'll go ahead and get started. Um, not sure how many questions there will be, and we want to have as many time for as many as possible. So uh, thank you for joining us for this panel panel uh, question and answer session on the uh, data management and sharing plans that are uh, required. I'm part of the new policy that's effect from the NIH that's effective on uh, January 25th of this year. So um, joining us on this panel are members of Dr. Hillard's uh, committee on um, implementing uh, this policy at MCW. So um, if you want to start us out, Dr. Hillard, with introducing yourselves and then other um, members of the committee who are our panelists today can follow suit. I'd appreciate it. Sure. So I'm Cece Hillard. I'm Associate Dean for Research. And um, as Catherine mentioned, we've had a, a really wonderful committee that's been working on this um, for well over a year now, kind of trying to get MCW well situated to be able to um, respond to this new requirement, as well as some other things about data. So um, I just really want to thank Catherine, and um, we also have with us Ryan Spellacy and Matt Richter. Um, I think Matt Blister's here too. Um, I'll let them introduce themselves, but they have all been on the committee and really done a great job in helping us pull this together. And then we also have Ashley Zeidler and um, Ashley Sanchez, who um, have taken care of putting together the LibGuide and the Infoscopes page, respectively, that hopefully um, you already know about. But if not, we'll put all that into the chat so you can um, be introduced to it. So I'll pass off to Ryan. Hi, Ryan Spellacy. I'm a bioethics faculty here at MCW, and I'm the director of the Human Research Protection Program which uh, includes the IRB. Hi, everybody. I'm uh, Matt Richter, the Director of Corporate Compliance and the Compliance Office at MCW. And my camera, for whatever reason, is not working today. So my apologies uh, for not being on camera. Thanks. I'm Matt Flister, Director of Research Computing in the IS Department. Hi, I'm Ashley Zeidler. I'm the scholarly communications librarian. And I might have been remiss in not saying I'm Catherine Melsna, and I'm um, in the libraries, uh, currently the assistant director for scholarly resources. So um, we can go ahead and, and dive right in. Um, last session, uh, um, Ashley read off questions that were in chat. You're also welcome um, because that works best for the recording. Um, so people can hear the question uh, often when you have a recording, there isn't a recording in the chat. And then you're also welcome to just jump in and um, unmute and ask a question as well. So um, we're open for that now. Nothing in the chat yet. Well, this is Shishun Yu. I will open the question. Uh, I'm wondering would the MCW have a template to help uh, for, uh, the faculty to prepare that uh, document that was two, two pages? Well, um, as Dr. Hillard mentioned um, at the start of the meeting, there is an uh, information on Infoscope okay. that um, Ashley Sanchez provided early on in the process, trying to gather a lot of information together. And um, Ashley Zeidler also created a, um, a library guide that deals specifically with the requirements for this plan. But I would say um, we are recommending that you use the DMP tool, which has a pretty simple uh, URL. So it's just dmptool.com. Oh, wait, maybe .org, yeah, <laughs> thanks. And MCW has an uh, instance of this, uh, and we're an institutional member, so 
Uh, when you bring that document up, it walks you through the process and off to the right for each of the elements and questions. Um, there is a place to seek guidance from the NIH and guidance from the DMP tool itself. And then also, um, Ashley and I added quite a bit of guidance from MCW. So there are three ta tags there, and you can um, click on that tag and read uh, the guidance for each section. Also in the tool, there is um, kind of um, suggested language that kind of has a fill in the blank type of approach there. So um, there's a lot of information linked out in those tabs on the right-hand side and a lot of information um, in our library guide, as well as if you, um, the NIH has, has a page as well. Um, so if you just search for the NIH on data management and sharing plan, you should be able to come up with that as well. Ashley, maybe you could put the link to that, um, both the DMP tool and the data management and sharing uh, page from the NIH into the bar. Also, um, if you want to see what that looks like, Ashley could show that um, as well. I can yeah. share my screen with the um, the PDF. Is that what you were meaning, Catherine? Oh, I just meant like if he wanted to see the data man, uh, the DMP tool, and where oh, the okay. uh, guidance is in that tool. Um, so. If you use this tool, it's uh, to just to help you to address the question required, but not necessarily form a document you can be used. It actually will do that. It breaks oh, I see. down. So yeah. here, uh, CC sharing um, the elements of the plan. Yeah. A, this is just kind of a draft that the NIH came out with. Now the DMP tool allows you to input data into all of these sections. Mm -hmm with the guidance available on the right-hand side of the screen. And at the end, you are able to print this out and it's ready to go. It creates the plan and then you can attach it. Oh, I see. That's re really helpful. Um, and if you look through the questions here, most of them are really related to your particular research project. So, um, you know, what other people are doing at MCW isn't going to be terribly helpful for you. But one of the things you might that um, it is important for you to look at is the last element six. This is we have written some MCW boilerplate um, and that um, describing how MCW plans to oversee the project. And that's either available on Infoscope or Catherine, is that now in the, the tool, the DMP? It is. Yeah. Okay, great. So, so um, also, yeah. if you use the DMP tool, it's very easy to click and say, um, ask somebody to review your plan. So yes. we, can take, um, we can take a quick look at it, um, depending upon how the timing is, uh, how many we get, how late in the process. Mm -hmm. um, we can make some suggestions or add some comments and get that back to you um, to hopefully strengthen. Oh, strengthen. that's great. Who, who can I contact? Um, if you go and use the data management or the, I'm sorry, the DMP tool, um, it actually will send it to Ashley who, um, who will share with um, me and we'll do it together. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, you know, if there are questions on that, we can also seek out other members from this panel for advice if we're unsure. Um, but um, if you just uh, contact uh, myself or Ashley Zeidler at the library, if you don't plan on using the tool, um, we can assist you with that. Yeah. For the, for the tool, we need to create a account, right? I assume. Mm -hmm. um, yes and no. Like Because we have it set up with single sign-on from, from MCW, all you do is go into the tool. Maybe, Ashley, would you want to show that? Yeah, that'd be a good idea. Yeah. Okay. Yep, let me share. <clears throat> all right. Do you all see the DMP tool? Yep. Yes. Okay. So this is what you'll land on. And I'll just put in my MCW email address and click continue. And you'll know you're in the right spot because you'll see MC 
um, Medical College of Wisconsin, and then just click this sign in with institution. And this should look familiar. So just click log in. And now you're on the dashboard. Um, when you first log in, though, you will see probably this page right here. Um, so just filling in your name, um, institution should already be there. And that's about it. So it's pretty easy to get set up and then you can get started right away. I see. Um, and you'll always see our link to our email up here. Um, and then when you're within their plan too, you'll be able to request or um, we'll get that email if you want that feedback. <clears throat> So I see, I see project the title. This is meant to be like each, say, an NIH grant you create one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, good. Well, my actually next question is, uh, uh, examples are always helpful. How well we can get examples if there's any? Yeah. So there's a few. Um, the NIH actually has, gosh, I think it's seven or nine examples now on their website and I'll share that when I'm done <laughs> doing this but within DMP tool itself you can click on public DMPs and this is where researchers have said they would share their um, data management plans either with anyone or within their institution so we're seeing anyone who shared um, with the general public and actually let me here. But if we want to look at just um, plans from the NIH or for the NIH, so we'll see that. <clears throat> and there's 21 right now. I feel like you will see more coming in. Mm -hmm. um, but wow. here's one right here. So if you want to see an example of one of the current NIH DMSPs, here's one from Washington University. And you can click on that and get a little information. So everything they filled out here. I see. Now at this point, we don't know since right. what, because this is a forthcoming policy and they, they yeah. haven't been submitted yet. And of course you'll wanna look for this, that the template is written on the forthcoming policy. So we don't quite know yet if, um, if, um, if that particular one would be accepted or not. We are hoping that after people find success within MCW and have their plans approved that they will kind of open them up for, you can save them to the general public or you can just save them so, or grant permission so that people within your institution can see them and so in that way. But um, oh, it looks like Matt shared the link to, to the, um, to the sample plans that the NIH put out. And since I'm here, I can show you um, what it looks like to make sure you have the Medical College of Wisconsin guidance turned on. Um, <clears throat> so actually, let me go back and create a new plan. So this is how you start out. Um, you'll find your funder. So the NIH, and then choose the forthcoming plan from the drop down. And so I'll create that. And here you'll see on the right, um, select guidance. So DMP tools always turned on, um, and Medical College of Wisconsin should be turned on as well. But just want if you just want to ensure that it is over here on the right. If it's unchecked, you can check it and click save. Um, but it should be on for you when you get in here. Um, we tried to test that this morning. Yeah, thanks, Ashley. Mm -hmm. Show them what it looks like. Yeah. So here's the right plan. We have all elements listed here in those drop down boxes. So if I click one, you'll see a lot of information, but it is all helpful. Um, and over on the right, so guidance, you'll see some guidance directly from the NIH, guidance from DMP tool, and now we have guidance from MCW. So if you click MCW, you'll get um, one or multiple drop down boxes with helpful information and links. So if you're 
curious about what um, we're talking about, we have linked um, to outside sources to help you navigate that. And then how about also show that what we have on the element six, that's... Mm -hmm. Yeah, so for that um, oversight of data management and sharing, if you click on MCW, roles and responsibilities, we do have the language listed right here that came from Dr. Hillard in the group. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, so when I read a little bit and seems like you need to prepare for the data management for the big data, like sequencing. Um, so is the, we say convention data, let's say frostatometry data, Western broad, do you need to prepare for, for that too as a data management? Yeah, you do. You have to talk That's about right. all of your data and how you're going to um, manage it, but more importantly, what are you gonna do about sharing it? Um, there are some general um, places, sites that you can use to share your data. You can also um, outline that perhaps you will share data through your publications. Um, there are a lot of different ways to do it, but yes, you really need to tackle all the kinds of data that you're going to be generating in your project. And, you know, it may be that you have different ways of sharing different kinds of data, um, but you'll have to outline all of that. I see. Um, if I understand correct, that this is not the score driven component, and right? But if you don't do so well, you if you submit a grant in February, and uh, so uh, if you don't do well, they uh, they will ask you to revise, and if you get the scoreable or, or funded score, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. so it won't be reviewed by the peer reviewers either. It's a special group that's trained to determine whether the answers are acceptable and appropriate. So you'll get kind of a pass fail on this. So you won't be funded unless you get a, your plan is approved, but there's time for in the just in time process to go back and forth on it. So um, the only part that's in the grant itself that a reviewer might see is if you put in some cost for the data management and sharing um, provision of those services, then that needs a small justification, which within that budget section of the grant itself. And that would be the only thing that a reviewer might see, but they're not even able allowed to score that piece, but they might see it. I see. But the last question I have is, uh, you know, eBridge, do we have a a specific uh, place to upload upload mm -hmm. this document. This this is will be different than before. Ryan, do you want to take that one? Sure. Although, uh, as as I learned last time, there were <laughs> so for grants and contracts. Yes, there is a specific place to upload it. Mm -hmm. um, is that are you asking about grants and contracts section yes. of Seabridge or yeah? So there is, um, I don't recall exactly what it was because that's not my my world in eBridge. I'm kind of looking to see if there's anyone online that could address that. Um, we had an answer to that yeah. specifically in the earlier one of these. So you might be able to catch that from session one. But, um, and I think your whoever helps you with your grants um, getting them into the eBridge forms will know where to put it, but there is a, a specific spot. So previously, there was this, a document show, uh, called Shield Plan. Uh, is this replacement or additional? Um, I think that, I don't know. That's a very good question. Um, because that was your data sharing plan. So it seems like this is really an expanded version of that. So I don't know if you need that anymore as you put in an NIH grant. Um, Matt Richter, did you, or Flister, did you guys see that in the FH? I would, I would verify with grants and contracts, but I believe Dr. Miller that you're correct that that, that was the previous, 
it, way that eBridge accounted for this, although now that this is a an expanded policy requirement and it has its own space formally allocated in NIH application materials that it's it's been moved to, I believe the administrative uh, attachment section within eBridge. So you're you're accounting for it, but in a separate spot now where you can upload that two page plan. Mm -hmm. Again, please verify that with grants and contracts, but that's that's my understanding. Yeah. Well, that, and that's remember it. that this is now required where in the past that sharing plan was not required for all grants. It really had to do with them. Um, we usually have a page or half page, and I, 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 I think, I don't know what the, we still need to prepare for that, or there's a e-bridge still have spot that you have to uh, upload the, uh, the one we usually use. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good question. All right. Thank you all. I, I asked a lot of questions. That's all my question. Thank you. Yeah. We've been urging people who um, who are putting in grants for this first February deadline that um, any sort of feedback you get, if you would share it with us, we'd really appreciate it so that we can refine our advice to people. You know, everybody's doing this a little bit blind right at the moment. So um, it may take us a little bit to be, be absolutely sure what, what's gonna be required. The other thing is that's um, a little bit hard to find in the fine print is they don't want you to use URLs or hyperlinks in your data management sharing plan. And this is quite tempting in certain sections um, to refer to uh, different things, but um, those aren't allowed. <laughs> hmm. Any other questions? I'm sure you've got questions. <laughs> we have questions. <laughs> well, one thing I would say is um, look at this early. It does, it's, it's intended to have researchers think uh, prospectively about their data and have a plan going in as opposed to kind of, uh, you know, doing it like a little bit more ad hoc as you go along. So some of the questions do require forethought, especially where you might choose to share your data. And especially, you know, because some of that, where you share your data might um, have implications for how long your data can be shared. Repositories have uh, may have a certain time frame in which they promise to cure, you know, to um, curate your data and make sure it's um, available for sharing and reuse. Yep. I want to also mention um, that the plans are living documents, which is another. Nice thing about the DMP tool, you can go back into it and edit your plan as things change. Of course, that's one of the downfalls of like submitting a plan early in the process is you can't necessarily anticipate what's gonna come up and if changes are needed, um, you are expected to be in compliance with this plan. So if you find yourself needing to make a change, uh, please go ahead. The, it's intended for that, that you can go in and make a plan and submit it. Now, that can be part of the standard review of your grant that happens periodically. But if there's something that you need to change um, ahead of time or a big change, you can also submit that outside of that regular reporting schedule. Um, but everything that's in that plan uh, requires compliance as, as a condition of signing off on the grant. So um, so make sure you have that and are able to do that and that that changes with time as your uh, project might change and require. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I can just, yeah, questions. I was, I could keep talking about little, little things that are um, that to keep in mind too. But um, so while while you uh, you are discussing, I actually go into the DM two uh, DMP tool. So the first thing I need to do is create a plan. Uh, there's there's just no rec record of associated uh, associated the right so dashboard. this would be your first plan this is your first time in the tool so you have to create a plan you may have multiple grants and so you may have multiple plans in there but because you haven't used the tool before you have to start uh your your plan so the first thing is to put in you know enter the title of your project or your grant and then start describing it. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. I will, I will get into. Thank you. The other questions we got last time had to do with um, data repositories. And again, there's really nice information in on Infoscope and in the LibGuide. Um, and if you need more, there are nice links there to NIH. Um, so that's part of what you're going to have to figure out is what what kind of repository is your data best suited for. Um, and the first step is if if you're doing something that NIH has an NIH wide repository, that's that's highly recommended that you use that. But if if you're doing, as we were saying before, Western blot data or something a little bit um, more basic science-y, then um, there are a couple of nice repositories that you might want to think about using. Yes, yeah, so in general, the NIH is recommending that you use a subject repository at first, if there's one appropriate for your topic and the subject, then that would be the preferred one to use. And if not, then um, there's general list repositories that are available and that you can put data in. Uh, they vary, and there is a comparison chart on the library guide that talks about um, what one offers over the next, or if certain services within the repository, I mean, that may be free to put your data in, but there may be some fee for some other aspect of it. Again, these vary by repository, so you can look at those comparison charts. Um, so that's that that is a kind of decision or discernment process that may take a little bit of time if it's not obvious if you aren't currently aware of where you're going to want uh, your data stored. Mm -hmm. And I did want to mention there's a like I found there was a little bit of confusion in when you talk about storage in general. Um, you know, this is the sharing plan, but it's also the data management plan. So you need to describe how you're going to manage your data within the grant cycle, but then also how you're going to share your data for later use. So some of the storage is about keeping like your data safe and secure and do you have backup copies, those kind of things. And then the other part of the storage is storing it in something that can be um, shared with other researchers whether that's open and public or whether you have some data use agreements or whether there's some vetting of researchers who can use this data, which is sometimes the case with the NIH repositories. So, um, so just kind of keep that in mind. There's two different types of storage, how you store it at MCW to keep it um, managed well, backed up. And Matt you know, has a lot of that you know, um, for bigger data in the Research Computing Center and then um, but just, I mean, that can be a point of confusion. Mm -hmm. So there's storing for sharing and there's storing for like while you're using it. And there's no right or wrong answers here. This is really the whole reason that NIH is having us as investigators do this is that we know best the situation of our data um, and what the best approach is to storing it and sharing it. So, um, so really you need to kind of think about 
all kinds of things. And I do think that that, that list of six questions and their sub questions really does help lead you through the, the process. You know, are, are you standardizing your data in any way, shape or form? Is there special software that's needed to even access your data? Um, what are the human subjects protections and other things that are associated with your data? So, um, so really, um, I definitely, you gotta get this, give yourself some time to work through this, but I do think that um, the, the form itself helps lead you through the kinds of decisions you have to make. Yeah, and um, I think, you know, if you're not familiar and already using some of the data management best practices, this is a really good opportunity to dig in and to kind of um, understand those and learn those and then start to incorporate them uh, into your work. Um, for your own benefit as well as, as the benefit of others and with the reuse considerations. Yeah. Right. I was I was just gonna add, uh, so the library is available, right? They have quite a few resources now about data management. Research computing is also available to you. We have quite a bit of experience in practical data management since we store majority of the institution's uh, data, research data that is. Uh, and the whole point, I'll summarize it like this, uh, Cece. I think the point of these plans is so that uh, when you get to the performance period of your grant, it is easy for you to execute the actual research so that these questions are answered before and not having to be figured out during the grant. You don't want to generate data and then have to on the fly figure out where it will be held and how it will be shared when it is required to be shared at the end of that performance period. So the, the ideal situation is that a lot of those difficult questions can be answered. You can get help from the institution uh, and it makes it ideally much smoother for you during and after that performance period. Mm -hmm. That's the whole, the whole goal, right? Makes everyone's lives uh, ideally simpler, right? From NIH all the way down to in the institution staff, uh, such as myself, and then and then you as the researcher. Also, I just want to point out that Lisa put in the chat the um, the instructions for where you actually upload this in your eBridge um, when you're making the SF four two four form. Administrative documents, other plans or administrative attachments, other plans. I think Ashley's gonna try to provide the chat as well um, when with the recording so that people can see that if you're watching the recording, look for the That'd chat as well. Yeah. Hi, um, this is Lisa from GCO. I, so my mic wasn't working before, sorry. Um, if you are working in assist, there is a field called other plans. Um, I don't believe the numbers line up exactly with what they are in eBridge, but that's where it would go if you were putting your um, 424 together within assist. If that is the case, um, when you generate the full PDF, because the document is not peer reviewed, it's not pulling into what comes into eBridge. Um, as a PDF, so you would want to upload that separately alongside your application when you're putting that in eBridge so that we can see it here. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And while um, we were mentioning earlier that um, the final plan could go through some iterations once you get your just in time and, and have um, funding approval, but there you cannot submit um, and our grant right now without a plan. So you do have to create this um, at the beginning. As Matt said, hopefully create it well so you don't, you really do have that roadmap for yourself. So at this 
at this uh, stage, what the information put into DMP tool, who can see those information? Well, I, if mm -hmm. until um, only you, until you choose like a, a different sharing option. So you can choose to share, share it with the institution. Um, if you do request a uh, library or some review of it, then it'll be shared with us as well. Um, but, and, you know, it'll just be for you. Although if you put in contributors, they'll be able to look at it and edit it as well. But you have to set it up uh, initially, and then add the contributors within that within the DMP tool after you've started your plan. All right, thank you. And at that point, you can those collaborators, contributors that you can choose what access you allow them. It could be read only. It could add, they could edit it, or they could have uh, privileges similar to your own. Um, as well. Anybody else? You're welcome to type your questions into chat too, if you're not comfortable or seems more succinct than asking them in, in chat. Well, we can also wrap up early. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I, you know, um, spend some time with it, uh, do some advanced looking. Um, I think Matt is spot on, you know, the more time um, you spend thinking about this ahead of time, the better. And, um, and of course, everyone here who's uh, spoken and others at the college as well are um, going to be um, at your assistance to help you in whatever way uh, you need, just reach out. And, um, you know, the, it, this policy and is new to the NIH and it's new to us. So I'm sure we'll have further guidance based on our experience down the road and we'll incorporate into those into the tools we've already shared with you. Um, the InfoScope or the, the library guide and the DMP tool and, um, and there's bound to be new guidance coming out as I, as well with new experience. So stay tuned and um, avail yourself of us if need be. And, um, and uh, you know, good luck with it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's great. Very helpful. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Before we go, Lisa, do you know the answer to the question about um, whether we have to also include the sharing plan um, if what, that section's gone. What I have seen, it's still in there. Um, I believe it's still to be used in very specific circumstances, namely around sharing model organisms. Ah. Um, so I would, I would recommend that people go back and, and double check um, the instruction guide for their particular project, but all of the data and genomic information will be put into the new DMSP. That's right. That also is where you say whether you're going to share your transgenics and all that too. So yeah, got it. Good point. Another kind of pro of using the DMP tool as well is you can register the plan. And if you do that, you'll get a persistent identifier. And this allows you to link all these things together, the identifier for any manuscripts, the uh, data management plan, as well as the data itself. If, you know, so these things can all be tied, tied together and, and make it easier for other researchers or for yourself in the future. Mm -hmm. 
Matt, did, oh, I saw you un, unmute there, Matt. Did you have anything else? No, nothing to add, thank you. Okay. All right, okay. well, everybody. Oh, thanks, Catherine. Yeah, everybody have a great day. Uh, thanks for spending uh, some of it with us. And um, we'll, we'll be in touch, I guess. Yep, let us know if we can help. Yeah. Bye now.